this is a variable pitch controlled propeller system so it's actually made up of two shafts this one works in and out and both of them spin so what happens is this inside shaft can move three inches in and out and as it does this pin has a block that rides on it and the block slides in a groove that's in the base of each propeller so as it moves in and out the propeller changes its angle of attack or its pitch pitch like this on a motorboat it would just be spinning around or feathered it wouldn't be pushing any water this direction or that direction for our sailboat this is considered feathered because as we sail forward water passes by the propeller and there's not a lot of drag but the cool thing is we can change this to any desired pitch so we can mix engine power with sail power in other words we can be sailing along at four knots put a little bit of engine power into it pitch the blades appropriately and pick up another two knots and we've cast two sets of these propeller blades this set though i haven't yet ground down i got a nice sharp edge originally i didn't have a shroud on the boat but man i added a shroud and so i've cut these so that they fit just inside that shroud now this round piece of metal back here that wraps around where the prop goes is our shroud some people refer to them as court nozzles but this really isn't a court nozzle the court nozzle would have a an aircraft wing shape design to it here and it works a lot like an aircraft wing it helps uh, builds a low pressure here and accelerates the water before it even gets to the propeller they work great and better than a shroud but they also have more drag so when we're just sailing this will be a little bit more efficient than a quartz nozzle and we might modify it later on it would be really interesting to see the contrast between a shroud and a quart nozzle you know given everything else remains the same inside the boat is where this gadget down here sits that's our understand variable pitch control unit drive shaft attaches to this end propeller shaft comes through the shaft log attaches there a push pull cable will attach to there and it changes where that brass fitting down there rides along and that changes to where oil is either put on this side or this side of a big piston that's right there and when that piston moves that inside shaft there moves and that changes the propeller and the hydraulic oil that'll be supplied to it will just come off the power steering pump on the engine so whenever the engine's running the hundred stand will have oil supplied to it so the first thing i need to do is put that uh, shaft in the boat and uh, set this set in there mark them off and trim them down appropriately take the seal off and that'll push out And the next thing to go in is the cutlass bearing. It's just a brass tube with uh, rubber on it. And it's got grooves in the rubber. And that's where water can go through because it's water lubricated. And the water will actually flow back through and fill the whole shaft log. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of force, but that's okay. What the water will do is it'll flood the whole shaft log. But there's a seal at the other end that stops it from flooding the boat. Fresh coat of paint in there, so if it's too tight, I'll have to take it back out and sand down some of the paint. No, too much friction, so I get to use my cutlass bearing puller before I ever imagined I would. And one of my neighbor's little girls brought me a cupcake. Merry Christmas to y'all. Yeah, paint was just too much for it, gummed it up. That's much better. There we go. Oh my God, this thing's heavy. I have to wait for help. <laughs> no. There it comes. Yeah. Okay, that's good enough. All right. Hey, that was pretty easy. Gracias, amigo. No, gracias a ti. Here we go. It's cold out this morning. Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm not gonna have to take off much just a little bit that's a little too close right there a little shake or bump in the flange and it'll strike it I don't want that I've got two sets of these blades those I know fit so I'm just gonna make sure that these are actually no taller than those you gotta be careful handling them without gloves the edges here are really sharp well I guess they're all within a sixteenth of an inch no more than that 
Now, the goal is to get them balanced. And, and we've talked a lot about that. Uh, the first step is just to weigh them, see where we're starting. 14,544 grams. Mule train. So you ready for tacos, man? I'm I'm getting hungry over here. I didn't think I'd get ever get hungry again after yesterday. Oh, you pigged out? Yeah, I pigged out. I probably ought to put some trying to get my propeller system. To, oh, there it goes. You know, you start cussing at something and it just all of a sudden works for you. I got my propeller. I'm gonna balance the propeller today. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some guy gave me this comment that I should spin it with a drill and I just thought that was the nuttiest thing in the world and the more I thought about it the more I kind of like the idea so I'm gonna spin the prop with a drill here in a little while. That's walking down the beam. Oh, it's gonna come off. What are you, what are you turning anyway? The whole propeller shaft and the prop. I gotta figure out a way of getting it not to walk down the, the shaft though. Should come over and have tacos. This sand starts to rock back and forth, but it hardly has anything on it. I think we shim it a little bit. All right. Yeah, I think that's about 100 RPM. I don't know what we're supposed to see. Is it supposed to like shake apart more? I mean, because it's just sitting on the stand here. And it's not like the most solidly based thing. The only thing I notice is it clicks. One blade clicks. There, you hear it? I heard it, yeah. So one of them is terribly tight. <laughs> that one there, that was loose. This is my second set, this is my, that one's a little loose too. Your spares? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only one that's really snug. They're just, they're not grease, but they have just WD-40 on them. Okay, this is, this is stable up here now. Yeah, that'll help. That shim underneath it. Yep, sure. Okay. Yeah. Good for grease. Clutch. Ah, lovely stuff. You're gonna pack all that full of grease anyway. Yeah. Grease helps a lot. My ex-wife taught me that. What? Use plenty of lube. <laughs> Don't you have one of them RPM thingies? I do. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, it's giving me that little laser light you can see. Wow, 
That's 95 already. 95 RPM? 108. Yeah, I bet we had it up to a few hundred last time. Oh man, that is flying now. 210. 213. Yeah, there's a bit of a wobble right there. If I slow it down a little bit, I can get a good wobble out of it. The question is, how do we tell why it's wobbling, you know? Yeah. 200, there's no wobble. Going up. I wonder if the wobble will go out of it at a higher RPM. Do you think it would get more and more pronounced the faster it goes? It doesn't look like it's getting any worse. In fact, it looks smoother now. Yeah, it looks like it's now. This back one's got a little more wobble in it now. Looks like the shaft is bent and it's wobbling. No, I don't think the shaft is bent. I think it's just out of balance a little bit and it's wobbling. Go on, take it on up. Now remember, if it, if it comes out, it's going to hit the dirt and it's going to fly off that direction. Right. Now this definitely has more wobble on the back side here. Well, my question is if it was, if we were going to try and balance it, how would we know which blade to add weight to or take weight off of? I mean, with, we just, I think we just have to experiment. But I don't think that's enough wobble to sneeze at. These things are just sitting on dirt and boards, so they're yeah. springy as hell. I mean, look at that. Right. I can shake it around by just putting five well, pounds on it. We moved these stands close, further apart. Well, there's no weight on this stand back here hardly right. at all. Right. It's only, most of the weight's on that forward one. And all the wobble's right back here. It's not up there. It kind of started up there, and then it came back this direction. So I don't know. I think if I took lead bars and weighted that down more. Oh, set them on the frames? Yeah. Oh, 20. That's where it was taken the last time, wasn't it? Yeah. You can see a little bit in it. Not much. 30. There's some wobble. 280. This is what it feels like. It's consistent. I mean, it starts rocking and then right. it stays there. Get about 230 to 240 and it's bouncing. All right, one's down here. This is our second set of blades. This one's out by 100 grams on weight, so we're gonna see what the difference is. Try to wiggle them in. There it goes. Yeah, that helped a lot, okay. You're ready, aren't you? No. Ready now? No. How about now? <laughs> I don't know if I got oh, Yeah, ready to rock and roll. We tore the last one apart at 420 RPM. So we'll see if this holds together. And this blade sets 100 grams difference between the blades. The last one was only 24 grams. So we'll get a very non-scientific measurement here, but we'll see how bad if it shakes more or less. I guess this is gonna shake more. Grab the meter. Ooh. Where are we at? 220. It's really not shaking any more than the last one, is it? 230. Yeah, that's shaking more. It is shaking more, yeah. 235, 238, 242, 
It looks like it's, look at it smoothed out. Look at that. Look how smooth it's running now. 330, that's our max. Alright, the drill's getting hot. I'm going off slow. We're up to 630. Alright, that's free. Right now, it's not paying in 580, 570, 560. That's fantastic. It's still going over 500. I think it's fine. It has that spot right there at 220. And it smoothed out after that. Well, actually, it got up to. I think it has to do with uh, the residence. Residence? Residence. Residence. Yeah, I think it's a residence problem. Yeah, I'm going to stop it. 240. Well, I don't think 100 grams is a big deal anymore. Yeah, I feel real good about that. Well, no, I mean, I wouldn't do anything because there's only 123 grain, grams. Right. Okay, just to give you an idea of how much 124 grams is, that's stainless steel stuff, 122 grams. 124 grams between the three blades. I could take that off right out here on the right edge on the if edge. I wanted to. Yeah. But I don't know where they're not balanced. Yeah, that's right. the other thing is we're not finding center of gravity. And this, to me, when you spend it, if the weight's out here on the end and all this weight's in here close, that's gonna throw it off because this has more pull force right because it's your so the weight's further out yeah 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 the the centrifugal force would right. mess it up so i don't just need to get them in the right weight if i was going to get them better i need to get them with Every the center of gravity in the same right. spot right oh, that's, that's smooth. smooth that's that's smoother than the other one was oh, yeah and this is why this is my first set yeah not my second set You know, I, I could, I think what we do is we put it in the boat, we mess with it, we have a vibration, and then we can take them back off while we're in the water, it's no big deal, and tweak them. I don't think it's worth messing with now. I only have one set of these square little blocks and it's just the kind of thing you could drop into the drink when you're changing out a propeller blade in the Mississippi. So. I'm gonna get measurements off before it goes in and draw up some just so I can make some spares. Now I'm not great at CAD, I just have functional skills, but I can draw these pieces up and then we can machine them out on the CNC. And we even did that to design the prop. I started with mathematical formulas to give us the, the degree of offset of these various cords and then we put a skin over that and that becomes the pattern that we cast from. So if you want to see videos on the making of these propellers, uh, I got a whole series of them and most of the information is in a great book called uh, Propeller Handbook by Dave Gurr and a uh, great book for how to calculate all this stuff. It even has a section here on uh, variable pitch control propellers. So if you ever want to know anything, there's a book on it. That may be the final installation, so I'm going to jam it full of grease. That's a nice sound. <clears throat> I gotta say, it is still bizarre to see it floating. Yeah, sitting up in the air like that. Okay, that's it. Next video, we'll hook it up inside the boat. So fortunately, it looks like we don't have to do anything further to balance our blades. But if we did, or if we find that it's got too much vibration on the water, there's some things that we can do and one of them is to suspend the blade like this with a clamp but we'd want to put a real sharp point on the clamp on this side and this side and that would give the blade the ability to find 
it's balance on those points. Then we get a spirit level and we put a line straight down the blade that's perfectly vertical, its orientation and weight this direction. Then we unclamp the blade, change its orientation about 90 degrees out, and we draw another line straight down the blade vertically. Where those two lines cross, that's center of gravity. And what we'd be after is we'd want to get the center of gravity for each blade in the same spot. And so by taking some measurements, we could see, okay, this center of gravity is much higher up than this center of gravity. So if we take some weight off the bottom of this blade, that center of gravity will move up. And if we got them all matched perfectly, they'd be much better balanced. So it's not just a matter of their overall weight. It's also a matter of where that weight is actually located on the blade. And as we saw in the CAD drawings, each of these blades is made up of a series of airfoils that's skinned over. And if those airfoils are a little different between one blade and the next, then the performance of the blade might be a little different. It could be pulling a little harder or a little less. So that could cause a balance problem. It's not likely because they're all good castings from the same pattern, but it could be an issue. And if it comes down to that, we can put it over on the CNC machine and have it probe the whole surface of this and get a mathematical plotting of this blade, do the next blade, compare the two sets of numbers, it'll tell you where this blade's foil is a little bit different than this blade. Then you find the heavier of the two blades and you grind it down a little bit till they're perfect. In truth, I've seen propeller blades that were plates of steel welded onto solid steel shafts and they were working okay. So you don't have to have everything down to uh, SpaceX technology. A lot of the in-between stages will work just fine. So that's it. The blade's on. What did you make today? Send us your photos. And remember our travel to the port date is August 12th and our launch date is August 21st. Come join us.